Hey guys, welcome to Summerfield Farm and Draft Horses. Where? That's a daylily. It's one of my favorites. This one was here 30 years ago, 35 years ago, no, 40 years ago when we bought our house. Well, we bought our house five years ago, but they planted it when they built the house. So, um, why am I showing you my daylily? Well, they like the heat. They like the summertime. They do very, very well in the summertime. Unfortunately, not everything does very well in this kind of heat. Those guys, those guys, for instance, do not do very well in the heat. And that's what I'm going to talk about today is heat and your best friend that's in there. <laughs> it has been very, very hot in North Carolina. And the other day, I received a phone call, or actually a text message from a very good friend of mine who told me that her mom was in a panic and that her horse was down and to call her right away, which I did. You know, that's what you do with friends. I had never met her mom, never at all. We're just Facebook friends, but I am a very long time friend to my or her daughter's husband. It's a long story. <laughs> But um, come to find out, the horse wasn't colicking. It was just suffering from heat exhaustion. So, that's what I'm gonna talk about. How can you tell the difference between colic and heat exhaustion in a horse? Stay tuned, we'll be right back. So here's a cool little app that I have on my iPhone. It's called um, Dark Sky. And, um, oh, I'm in Pikeville. No, this, oh, there we go. All right, so this is our temperature here right now. And it's 80 degrees. When I first did this video, um, it was, it was pretty crazy. It was hot. It was like 90 degrees. Felt like 104, but um, my, temperatures were off just a little bit so I'm, I'm gonna redo it so here's right now we just had um, like this huge thunderstorm come through here let me show, I'll show you there's a that just came through I'm that little black dot and uh, <laughs> the horses got a really really nice cool bath but um, dogs were not very happy with what was going on so let's go back to the forecast okay so when you think about your horse overheating, um, you need to add, you need, or to have an app that will add up the humidity and the median temperature. And once you get to um, a heat index of, I think it's like 120 or less, and you're okay. Um, there's not a lot of sweating going on, the horse is gonna be comfortable, and as it goes up to like 180, now you're, you're playing with fire. So what do I mean when I say 120 and 180? So what you want to do is right now it's, well, that's 80%. I was messing around with this. Let's go back here. Temperature. Ha! All right. So temperature right now is 80 degrees. So there's, it says now it's overcast, 80 degrees. And then the humidity is 80% humidity. So yeah, it's kind of muggy outside right now. So you want to take your 80%, you know, your 80 degrees temperature, and then you want to, this is so cool, uh, add the percentage of um, humidity. So when I add the two, eight and eight, is 16 you have 160 and the 160 means your horse is going to get really hot um, that they're gonna sweat they if you work them hard or if you work them a lot their heat like heat stress is gonna be you know 
pretty, pretty apparent. Uh, they're going to get hot and you're going to want to cool them down and give them extra time to cool down. You want to cool them down properly. So that's, that's where I'm coming with this one. Now see 72, oops, sorry, 72 at five o'clock in the morning. Like I'm going to be up at five o'clock in the morning on a Friday with 90% humidity. So you've got what? 72 plus 90 is what you guys? 142. <laughs> so now you're looking at a better range. So you're looking at between 120 and 150. Now the horse is just normal. It's like every day, nice weather for them. They do a little bit of work. They might get a little sweaty, but you know, they're not going to die and it's comfortable for them. So when you get to this, the temperature and oops, the temperature and the humidity, where's my humidity? There it is. When you get to these two numbers at 180 or more, you just might as well hang it up. Go in the barn, sit in front of the fan, you know, swat at the flies, give them a cookie or treat or something like that. And, um, yeah, that'll be that. And you probably should take the day off. So because of all that, how do you know? Say you've worked your horse, say it's, it's used to being in this temperature. Say you live in Arizona. Well, it's very dry in Arizona, but here in the South, in North Carolina, it gets hot, humid, hazy. In New Hampshire, they call it the three H's. Hazy, hot, and humid, and it's awful. Especially up in New Hampshire when it very rarely gets above 80 degrees. And next thing you know, it's 90 degrees and 80% humidity and everybody's dying. <laughs> so, I'm going to show you what normal heat tolerance and abnormal heat tolerance in a horse looks like. You're not a horse. What did you eat? You got all over your mouth. <laughs> you can't come out with me. Not today. All right. Hi, Jarvis. Jarvis here doesn't like the heat, but he tolerates it very well. As you can see, a couple things he's stomping. All right. Before I get close to him, hi, you can see he's very sweaty. Yes. He says, I'm very sweaty, mama. Oh, I'm so sweaty. And he got into all sorts of <laughs> red clover. So you can see he's sweating. He's got sweat around his eyes, sweat around the back of his head and his ears, and um, down his neck, around his muzzle. He's very, very, very sweaty. Thank you. You are sporting. You are doing great. Yes. Thank you for modeling. You're wonderful. And this is how he cools off. As he's going to sweat. And the breeze is going to come by and it's just like people they they cool off a couple of things that i want you to see can i see your face again thank you look at his nose and watch his breathing see his nose he's, his nose is very normal yeah i need to see your nose can you come back i need to see your nose again can i see your nose come here mr nose let me see your nose come here let me see your nose Thank you. So his nose is not flared. He doesn't look like he's stressed. He's not breathing too heavy. So this is a horse that can tolerate the heat very, very well. Now, if I made him work, he'd, he'd sweat up even worse and it would be really bad, but he's doing a very good job at sweating, napping, taking it easy and just conserving his energy and trying not to get overheated. Now, let's go see Friday. And there's Friday. Friday comes from Georgia. At least that's where they bought him. Yeah, I know. You are not tolerating this heat very well, are you, honey? First thing you're going to notice is his breathing. His nostrils are very, very flared. He's breathing extremely hard. He's got some sweat. He's sweating up on his ears, but not half as much as Jarvis, as you can tell. He's a little sweaty down here. Not too, too much, but this is the number one things that you want to look at. This is a horse that is under stress. He's very hot. He's very stressed out. He's trying, he's basically panting and he's trying to cool himself down. 
His muzzle's a little wet. He's a little sweaty. But his face isn't nearly as sweaty as Jarvis. Jarvis's face is all wet. So he's having a very hard time cooling himself down. So he's doing the best that he can by breathing heavily. I know. And trying to cool himself down. So the thing that we're going to do with him is I'm going to take him right into the wash bay and we're going to cool him down and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, the first thing you need to do is get your horse in the wash bay. Um, I just gave him his antibiotics, so he's got a little bit of white on his mouth. So um, you guys don't know, he's on antibiotics. He has a little bit of a swollen sheath, so I think he's uh, fighting some type of infection. We're going to the vet tomorrow, no, Friday, Friday morning and um, she's gonna do some blood work and kind of make sure that he's okay. Um, but what you wanna do first, and when you get your horse and you're, you suspect that he's suffering or she's suffering from heat stroke, you wanna first look at your horse and assess it. Is it hot? Is it kicking at its, at its belly? Is it rolling around? Is it laying down? How weird is it acting? Um, for those who don't know what colic looks like in a horse, um, go back a couple weeks to when we had Mr. Darcy and what it looks like when a horse colics. So that's pretty much awful. But he's not doing that, thankfully. He's just very, very hot. Um, some will just lay there on the ground where it's nice and cool. It's cooler on the ground than it is being up high. Um, others will just stand there kind of like him and look miserable. So first you want to take their temperature and you can either use um, a very long probed anal thermometer that the veterinarians use and or you could use one that's made for human use, label it well, <laughs> and you want to take their temperature and it should be anywhere between 99 and 101.5 degrees. If you're good there, then you know they're just suffering from heat stroke. Hi. Do you want to help? You're getting a bath afterwards. Yeah. You're going to get a bath afterwards. Because you're all yucky and stinky and sweaty. Yeah, you are. <laughs> okay, so back to uh, Friday. Okay, so what you want to do, I don't have my, my microphone on, so what you want to do is you want to get those, those legs as cooled off as possible. Do not spray the body. Don't spray the body. Spray the legs and you want to spray them down, scrape off the water. Spray them down, scrape off the water. What you don't want is you don't want that, that water to heat up against their skin because they're already hot. And that water is gonna heat up real super fast on a very warm body. So that's what we're gonna do with him. I'm gonna spray off his legs. He's gonna be all antsy dancy, scrape him off. And we're gonna do it a couple times. And then once his nostrils start stop flaring and his breathing stops being so labored, um, then we'll know he's cooled down.
so I've gone around and I've washed his legs. Now, as you can see, he's still breathing pretty hard, but this is because he doesn't like to be in the wash bay. But as you can see, he's not breathing as hard. You know, he is got, he's got the fan on him. He is cooled down just a little bit, but this is nerves. And it's probably a little bit of pain because his sheath is still a little swollen. But you can see his head isn't bobbing as much. He's holding it just a little bit higher than he was before in the barn. Um, he's still a little upset, but this is nice and cool. But he's not, he doesn't have that glazed look on his face. He just looks really upset. <laughs> I know, you can't come out yet. <laughs> you can't come out yet. Yes, I know. That is really low on his nose. The knot came a little loose. Doesn't belong there. Back up. Back up, please. It belongs up here. Like, way up here. This knot came loose. So it needs to be, like, way up high. So. Alright, so now that we've got his legs sufficiently cooled off, and I did touch his, feel his legs and make sure that everything from basically here down is nice and cool. So all the blood that comes down into his legs is going to come up and kind of cool off his feet. So now I'm going to cool off his belly, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to work my way up. I'm going to scrape, spray, scrape, spray at the same time, and that way he gets cooled off. And he'll also learn that baths are not so bad.
Now we have to take care of the chicks. I know. Oh, that's a terrible cough. How come you coughed? How come you coughed? Oh, that's a terrible cough. Hang on. You're welcome. Now we gotta go take care of the chicks. But first um, is I wanna spray these guys with some fly spray. So they don't get eaten right away. Like he's probably already getting eaten. I know, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. There we go. Now he, the, um, the flies really like him a lot. As you can see. And I'll come out here later. And there'll be like 10. I think I'm almost out. Of the big, those things. That just walked away. So, Jarvis. See you later. You guys ready to have your stuff moved? Huh? Do you need food? Just put most of your food on the ground. And then, you gotta give them some water, you gotta move their tractor. Because this is where their tractor was yesterday. That's all poop. Like, literally. That's where the food was, and all of this is poop. It's kind of like that. There's the food. And uh, over here is all the poop. You can see all in there. So that's why we move this every day because we don't want our chicks to, our food, to be laying in their poop. They look gross enough as it is. So the biggest thing is you want to look for heavy breathing. You want to look at temperature. You want to look at a whole bunch of different things to see if your to see if your horse is suffering from heat stroke or colic. So they're two very different things with two very different symptoms and displays. So I hope you guys learned a little bit of something today. Um, there's more to it than that. There's so much more to it as with every topic about horses. There's always more to it. And that just happens to be the best way that I know what's going on with this guy and with this guy when it comes to the hot weather here in North Carolina. So I hope you guys stay warm-ish, <laughs> dry, <laughs> cool, whatever. <laughs> stay in your air conditioning. But the best of all is watch these guys. They have no way to get out of the, out of the heat and to alleviate any of the problems that they run into except for what you provide to them. So give your horses the best home that you can and <laughs> we'll see you next time. Summerfield Farm and these guys, draft horses. Don't lean up against that. Don't do it. Don't do it. Thank you. Jarvis! <laughs> That is not for you to play with. Don't. Hey. <laughs> That's not a toy for you. That's to hold my food. Thank you.